Hi and welcome to this new PowerShell tutorial series on RESTPS. If you've ever wanted to make APIs using PowerShell, so basically like a REST command, um, so similar to like fast API or anything like that that you were able to do with Python or other uh, programming languages, you can do with PowerShell as well. So we'll actually take a look at how to set up RESTPS, how to configure different routes, um, and then I will also be showing you um, a little Postman um, interaction with it. So in the first video, we're just going to go over the setup of RESTPS, and then I'll show you guys how to execute just like a simple command using Postman uh, from a client computer. And then in the next videos, I'll be going over like how to add your own uh, routes and your own commands um, into RESTPS to be able to utilize it for your tools that you want to build. So the first thing is first, and we have to install the module RESTPS. Uh, so to install the module, you would simply just use the install module commandlet and then RESTPS. So we're just going to run this. Now, what might happen on your system if you haven't enabled TLS 1.2, you might get an error message. So I'll show you guys that error message and I'm gonna show you guys how to fix it if you guys do get that error message. Um, but you will get, no matter what, this untrusted repository message. Um, you'll just wanna do uh, yes to all in this case because RESTPS does have a dependent library um, called, I believe it's uh, Power Lumber. So by doing this install module RESTPS, you'll get all the dependencies that it needs. So here we are, it's just installing the Power Lumber and RESTPS right now. Uh, so as you saw, I got no error messages. What is possible is you might get something that looks like this. So you might get like some warnings, unable to download from URI, and then you'll get like this Microsoft link, unable to download the list of available providers, check your internet connection. Now, what that typically um, means is that you don't have TLS 1.2 enabled on your system um, for the .NET framework. So the way to check that is if you do a square bracket, so open and close square bracket, and then dot, uh, net dot service point manager, and then colon colon, security protocol if you run this you should see tls tls 11 and tls 12 so tls 11 is tls 1.1 and tls 12 is tls 1.2 so to enable tls 1.2 you're going to want to execute uh, these two commands that i have here i'm just going to paste them in here because they are quite long i will be posting these three lines in the description below. So all you'd have to do is run this first command here that I showed you with the security protocol. If the installed module doesn't work, check that. If you don't have TLS 1.2 in the list or TLS 1.2 or 12 in the list, uh, go down to the description and copy those two lines, paste them in your PowerShell, run them. Uh, and then just close PowerShell and reopen it. And you should then be able to run the install module RESTPS. Uh, this had me stumped for a little bit of time uh, because I wasn't sure what was going on, um, but I, we eventually figured out that I was just missing the TLS 1.2. So that is a handy little tip uh, that will come in handy if you're trying to install this module for the first time. Uh, so then once we've installed the module here, we have the module. All we need to do now is import module rest PS. And then what we want to first do is we need to invoke the deployment of rest PS. Now, what this is going to do, this is going to set up a file folder with all of our routes and all of our scripts. So it comes with some basic scripts and some basic routes. Um, so we're just going to set it to a local directory, and our local directory, it's actually just going to be the default directory, really, but we're just going to put it to C um, backslash RESTPS, and let's run this here. So just to show you guys, I actually do not have 
um, the setup here. So in my C, I just have my scripts folder that we kind of work in every video. So let's invoke this here. That's going to set up. So then we have our REST PS here. We have our bin and our endpoints. So our endpoints have our delete methods, get methods, post methods, put methods. We have our routes here. And then in our bin, we have a bunch of scripts. And in the endpoints, we also have scripts. So that is perfect. So what we can do now is we can start our listener. So the listener is really what starts off the REST PS service. All we've done so far is really just install the modules and kind of prepare the environment for it to be deployed. Now what we need to do is simply create a little hash table here. So let's create a REST PS params and then we're going to set this to a hash table so as we know to do that it's just the at symbol and then an open and close curly bracket and in there we're going to do a routes file path and then we are also going to have our port now the default port that this runs on is port 8080 so we're just going to keep that there and let's copy our routes path. So our routes file path is going to be this file. So in REST PS endpoints, it's going to be this REST PS route. So all I do is I shift click, right click on it, copy as path. And then I usually just paste that in here and I just wrap it around with single quotes. And then all we need to do after that is do a start rest ps listener with the rest ps params and let's run this here so there we are it is running now um, so it is running in our powershell window here so what i'm going to do here is i'm actually just going to change the screen here to show you my actual um, computer in the background here, so there we are. Um, so let me just move this here. So we have our server here. And let me just bring up Postman. So here we have Postman here. Uh, so let me actually just zoom in for you guys because this is not gonna be super clear otherwise. Right, I think that that should be good, I believe. And... All right, there you are. So here we are we, with our postman here. So what we're going to want to do is You're going to want to put in your IP address of your server that you are running the REST PS on. So in my case, it's just 172.30.123.5.8080. And then what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to put in, um, it's going to be, I believe, let me just bring up the server here to bring up our routes that come with it. And for us, it's going to be uh, just slash process. So let's do slash process here and then question mark and then name. And then let's do PowerShell ISE. So if we send this here, we do get back our process name, which is PowerShell ISE, the ID of it and the main window title which um, is probably dead on. Um, so, yep, that is dead on here. So let me just hide this window here and let's go back to our server. So that is pretty much it for the con whole configuration. Now, what you would be able to do um, is just start another PowerShell window as well. And you could do a test from the server itself. 
So if we just do a, another um, variable here called rest method params, and then we're going to set that equal to the at symbol, open and close parentheses here. And then all we are going to do is we're going to do a URI is going to equal, in this case, it's going to be HTTP backslash backslash local host colon 8080. So this specifies the computer that we're on at port 8080. And then we're going to do process question mark name equals PowerShell ISE. And then we're going to do a method of get and then use basic parsing is going to be true. And then we're going to do an invoke rest method and then rest method params. And if we run this here, um, all right, so it seems that it is not. There is, so let me just double check everything. Everything seems right here. So let me just Oh, and actually this is where I see the mistake here. So we always have to make sure when we reference a a hash table in a commandlet, we always reference it with the at symbol. So here we are. Now that we ran this PowerShell ISC again, we opened up a second PowerShell ISC window. So we have the um, the two processes here. We have two instances of PowerShell ISC that are running. One is running with just administrator Windows PowerShell ISC, which we do see here. Then the second one is REST PS HTTP port 8080, which if we go, that is the window title. So it is working there. And then another command, which is going to be um, useful to show you guys, is going to be the endpoint slash shutdown, still a get method. Uh, but this will shut down your, oops. This will shut down your REST PS endpoint. So that is shut down. Now, if we go here, the listener has stopped. So that is really the basics of getting the REST PS configured and set up on your server or on your computer. In the next videos, I'm going to show you guys how to add some routes and configure some uh, PowerShell functions to run with those routes. Uh, so I'm going to be making some Active Directory specific ones again, uh, just since that is definitely seems to be a lot of people's uh, interest lately. Uh, so we're going to create some routes to get some users back so you can actually um, just do a REST method, um, invoke it, and get information on your Active Directory users without needing the Active Directory um, remote tools installed or even being part of the domain to get them back. So that's going to be super interesting and you can make a lot of cool tools using that. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and I will see you on the next video.